Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome back to my bedroom as we are returning to the high seas of Black Sails. This is season two, episode three. Three. We are only three into this season. <laughs> Man, so, mm, Billy is not dead, which I suspected. Eleanor is going to be dead. Fuck Nedlo. I hate him so badly. <clears throat> Tons of guys from the Walrus have been killed. The new ship. The new ship that they have commandeered. Do we know what it's named? I don't remember what it's named. But Flint. Flint is the captain now. And and, and that's where we're at. Stuff's happening. Not what it's supposed to be. And everybody's lives are in danger. <laughs> Everyone's lives are in danger. Lots going down. So I am excited to jump right back into it. And I'm so glad that you are here with me. So while we are getting ourselves cozy and comfy, ready to go, we've got our beverages. We've got our water. My citrus drink of the day is a uh, ginger whiskey because it's been a while since I've had a ginger lime whiskey. You're going to push subscribe, click, click the, all the things because I would greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who are deeply invested <laughs> about the temperature of my room right so you remember those of you who've been with my channel for a while know that I run cold I always have gloves on usually always freezing so the last couple days in the Pacific Northwest it's actually been a nice 60 degrees outside and rainy yet even with the window open fan going this room Right now, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if I'll ever be cold again. <laughs> but there we go. If you are following along on Patreon, thank you so much. We're going to sync up and push all the plays at the same time. And if you're not there, why not? I would love to see you there. Okay, y'all, let's get to it. Herein lies the problem we face if we are to secure Nassau's future. It is a problem that has festered for more than a generation. We're in the past. It's insidious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Illiteracy. <laughs> Her husband, <laughs> Governor Robert Thompson. <laughs> which solidifies his position and which only fuels the underlying problem. That's true, but I don't see how we can do anything about it. Take him we out. We get an honest man appointed governor in the Bahamas. We can get him appointed. The problem seems to be keeping him honest thereafter. Keeping him honest. Put a man on an island, give him power over other men, and it won't be long before he realizes he has power over other men. The lieutenant was just recounting to me his belief that the only thing that stands between us and a prosperous NASA is an ocean, a hundred years of history, and human nature. Sounds about right. More or less, Mom, yes. <laughs> a gift. Was oh, this the book? Thank you, dear. Well played. Although that edition is in Spanish, I don't think the lieutenant speaks it. Perhaps he should learn. In his profession, you never know when it might be useful. Especially when you stole in a Spanish warship. <laughs> Especially when you, when you commandeered Spanish warship. There's lots of books on it. Stop jacking off. <laughs> How many men do they have left? And they're in very high spirits after having just lost a bunch more fellas. Last item. Last item. The oh, they're all stomping along, yes. <laughs> well, I want to go home back in the bay. We're sailing a Spanish warship. Captain Hornigold's fort protects the bay from Spanish warships. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That someone must go ahead and explain so as to avoid a reactionary attack from the fort. Especially since they don't know that Horny Goad doesn't own the, run the fort anymore. <laughs> Which land? Ooh, was Flint watching the whole exchange? So, how many versions of his black sails flag does he have? He just keeps one stored on him at all time. Casey ends up on a different ship. Okay, Charles, this is a train? Or did somebody wrong you? Ooh, and they threw it. Wait, was that a chicken? Did they just throw a chicken at him? 
Well, that will take you down for a few. This guy. Was he called to a meeting or just showed up? No matter where I've been, one thing is true. There's always one, the one you don't cross. It would seem readily apparent that in this place, that would be you. Hmm. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I hear you and she have a connection. And if things were to deteriorate even further between us, I'd just like to know whether I'll have you to deal with too. Hmm. I can't imagine what we'd have to gain by taking an interest in the affairs of the Guthrie woman. How much does he trust this side guy? No matter how bloody this feud gets between she and I, I can rest soundly. No, you'll take no part in it. None whatsoever. Because, however, I'm going to take your thing. Lies upon her. Should you move against her, you may find no shortage of new enemies on the street. Perhaps. He's going to take that risk. Who knows how much you'd be missed, if at all. Hmm. What's that? Bribe. Tribute. Bribe. And the respect of my crew. Bribe. Ten percent of our most recent haul. Ooh, but that's not the treasure. The treasure that he's carrying. Blood money. Blood money. Well, Jack's getting a rip roar and early start and becoming captain now, isn't he? <laughs> she never came back to bed. Are they still in there? As far as I know, door wasn't open all morning. I don't think they're leaving anytime soon. With a little luck, we'll be on our way back to the Urca wreck within a matter of days. I forgot he was shot. And how do you plan to answer the question? What question's that? Why everything went to shit. Why is this request coming from you and not from Mr. Gates? Well, since we're coming in another ship altogether, I think it would be obvious that all hell broke loose. After my departure, please ensure that mine is the only longboat that ferries anyone to and from the island. And men will resist and you resist them right back. They all know that we're headed back for the Urka's gold. They all know where it is. And they all know that its defenses are weakened. We simply cannot allow that information leaking out onto the beach. Oh yeah, loose lip shink ships, literally, we have seen. Are these the ones? Oh. And picked. You understand what I'm asking you to do? Go back and watch oh, the gold. Keep watching oh. the Spanish oh. soldiers. Oh, spice we'll side mission. The I should be no more than two days behind you, at which point I'll need to know everything about their routines. Go. You certain they're the men for this? They're the only ones who didn't ask for more than I offered. So they had that in their favor. Jesus. <laughs> You're bringing something to read. It isn't for me. <gasps> it's for Mrs. Burroughs. What has she been up to? Besides sleeping with the minister. Strange. You and I have never shared more than a few words, and yet... I feel like we're old friends. <laughs> James talks about you all the time. Does he? Huh. Do you know what he told me about you? Nada. Nothing. Is it possible that you're so unremarkable as to resist any further description than that? Uh, Eleanor, what is the purpose of your visit here? You conspire with my father to sabotage our plans. Oh, that part. Okay. <laughs> But after the damage you've caused, I know what you owe me, and I've come here to collect. I need to speak with Underhill. <gasps> oh, no, she needs her dad's, doesn't she? Acquiring the partnership of a plantation the size of Mr. Underhill's could help bolster commerce on my side of the island. I thought he was an enemy of yours. Enemy of my enemy. I see things in a different light. Is John supposed to bring... Then less rum, more rum. Oh, Mr. Look. Dufresne was right. The men will expect provisions back by himself. By himself. 
I'll engage Captain Hornigold and make way for the ship to enter the bay. At least you won't have a hard time finding him. <laughs> Isn't that Hornigold's flag? Where has he shut up shop? Why isn't he in his fort? A lot has gone down, fellas. For this being like a pirate, rawr, rawr, squash buckling, there's a lot of politics on this show, and I, yes, I do get confused and lost sometimes. What? I hear uh, this is once again a place where men come with coins in their pockets and secrets in their heads and leave with less of both. And I hear you're the one doing the collecting. Oh, well, that's not a very good job of being a spy then, Max, is it? New crew on the island, captain by a man named Lowe. They're hiding some, seeing as his crew makes frequent use of your girls. I'd like you to find out what it is. The other day, I had a moment with Eleanor. It's amazing, isn't it, the spell she cast on us? Why are you, are you having this talk about? with you now? Yeah, thank you. Just today I heard all the captain was talking about were the awful things he'd like to visit upon Elenoka 3. Though I suppose if the value is great enough, it would give you pretense to move against him and call it business, instead of calling it what it actually is. Vengeance, something like that. Preemptive strike. Assassination. Oh, he used Lowe's money. That's amazing. It's not enough. <laughs> The money is generous, but I'd rather have something else from you. A ship? Your former shipmates, they wish to sail again under their own banner. But so long as they bear the black mark you put upon them, their prospects will remain dim. Oh. I'd like you to remove it. Oh, that is a price. I found a way to stop caring about her. Would you like to know how? Got under someone else. You understand the job I'm looking to fill? Yes, ma'am. You understand what happened to the last man who held that job? <gasps> was this... Was this some... Um, oh, yeah, these are the people from the ship that... Who's he, what's it saved? You asked me to bring one I would trust with my life. This is him. I gotta hope he squashes low. Nothing... Nothing bad can befall this man. Nothing. Don't get too excited, Eleanor. Oh, she hugged him. Oh, guess. Because I guess. <laughs> guess I'd hug him too. After the week she's had, but no. She doesn't have. Okay. You got some tales to tell each other. I led myself to believe that I would either never see you again or that all our problems would be solved. I never made space in my mind for something in between. Well, you should have. Jeez, you should have had five plans. You were missed. <laughs> what do we do now? Refit, hire a consort, finish the job. Is that possible? Well, I'm not possible. When I had some place to bring it all back home to, before the bay fell into the hands of a madman. Two madmen. He and his men were firmly positioned up there and threatening to sink every ship in the bay the moment we made any move against him. So you did nothing? What would you have had me do? Something. He'd have sunk every ship in the bay. He'd have sunk a few ships in the bay and it would have been in price worth paying. You weren't here. Yes, Flint, Flint would say that. You look me in the eye and tell me that you're certain that if I brought the Urca gold back here past those guns, he wouldn't use his position to rob me of every last ounce of it. I had to make a quick judgment. <laughs> a Spanish warship fell upon us. At that point, it's to gauge his faith in our mission. Was he going to tell the truth? I had to use my judgment whether to let him abort our entire endeavor and see my plans, your plans, evaporate. Truth. He's telling her the truth. I stopped him. That's how far he's willing to go, Eleanor. What did you do? Stopped him. What was necessary. And that there is no sacrifice too great to secure that future. I thought you and I were in agreement about that. He must be removed from that fort. Well, 
He's the only thing stop standing between me and hoo-ha, man. There's nothing about any of this that can't wait till tomorrow. Get some rest. We can discuss this further in the morning. That's your answer, pumpkin. Oh. Hey, Hamilton. I asked oh. the carriage driver for your address. Oh. Better time to throw the cold out here. Apparently not enough. <laughs> he looks to be somewhat undressed. Wow, that's a rather astute room. It's tidy. He's a navy man. That's what they do, right? Are you familiar with Jonathan and Margaret Gray, Lieutenant? They hold one of the largest collections of Egyptian artifacts in all of Europe. I thought perhaps today you'd join me in viewing them as my guest. Thomas is otherwise engaged. It would just be you and I. I don't think that's a very good idea. The point is how, how it would look. Yes, ma'am. Are you happy, Lieutenant? I don't think Captain Flit has ever been happy. Maybe briefly as a child. Possibly. Some sort of whimsy, but I don't think he's ever been like happy, happy. Were your husband to hear? I love my husband. I know what's said about me behind my back. Whispers of infidelities. My husband's heard them. Thomas and I are not bothered by them. Because they have an open marriage? The only question that remains is, are you? This feels like a setup. <laughs> John with horny gold. <laughs> How can you stand so close to him, knowing what he's capable of? And Sooner or later, you will be next. So Horny Gold's nose. That flint gates. Five million pieces of eight. Why? How do you do it? You were right. I don't know where our loyalties lie. Mm-hmm. Either we act now to remove him or no one will. You don't have time for this. No, you don't. Or the manpower. Then I suggest we act quickly. This is an obstacle Flint had no idea. No idea. And don't forget stupid old Ned. And as for Captain, while you're looking at him. Well, that went well. If you're angry about the horror meat, just fucking say so. You have an itch that needs scratching. Go with God. My trouble isn't that she knows how to play the thing between your legs better than I, but the one between your ears. Do you honestly not see it? Of course I can see it. Then why don't you stop it? I can't. You don't want to. There's a difference. She doesn't want to. Join me. Won't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd be on edge too, Jack. What's happening exactly? I'm repairing your reputations. Public display of reconciliation. Mr. Hammond, we hardly knew you. Well, you knew him enough to know he was a red ass bastard. Why? Why now? <laughs> So, I got a mission for y'all. <laughs> Will that do? Uh, we'll see. The food I procured should be waiting by the jetty. Get rid of it. Dump it. Sell it. I don't care. What? The crew. Tell them the truth. Stolen from them by Charles Vane and the horde of barbarians he now commands. Oh. I want them boiling over by the time I return. Where are you going? Oh. I see. Oh, there's a plan happening. Where are we going? I quietly instructed the driver to take you home. <laughs> I think you're someone who's very good at managing how you're perceived. 
and perhaps getting what you want without anyone ever knowing how you did it or perhaps if it ever happened at all he looks so different without the beard it's crazy but perhaps you're more concerned with whether or not people talk about what you and i may be doing behind closed doors than with what we actually are doing He's going for it. With an open curtain. Huh. What's the priest there? Is the minister? Is the minister there? Is the minister there? Well, it's not the minister. <laughs> Well, she's no longer being thought of as the witch of the island. Just jam it right in his oh, fuck first. <gasps> Is this ship getting boarded? Okay, Charles. What up? Leon. What is his plan? And I love how he didn't take the cup. <laughs> That's his bottle now. I admire you for coming to see me earlier. Showed you a man who knows his place. Knows your place. So I'd like to make you an offer. Partnership between your crew and mine. But as I'm certain you've heard, I was recently deprived of my ship. Which means I need a new one. I wish you to come with a strong crew. All the better. Don't be sorry, though. I think your men couldn't care less about Ellen McGuffrey. I think they find your feelings for her to be pathetic. And for all these reasons, I think my feelings about Eleanor scare you to death. I... Do your men even know you're here? I don't think this has jack shit to do with Eleanor. And yes, I do think they know he's there. Yeah, I think they know he's there. Now that would be funny if he switches places with Ned and then Ned goes on to the fort and then Flint attacks the floor. Oh, Ned. Oh, means you get up get off my ship. Oh, I think it's his ship now. Don't you want to hear the rest of my terms first? I get your ship. I get your cargo. I get your weapons. I get it all. And what exactly would I get in exchange for all that? Nothing. I had start. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. Oh, Mr. Holmes is busy right now. Mr. Holmes doesn't work here anymore. Oh, this is gonna cost Charles something. You better hope your fellas break down that door soon. So did anyone on that ship get to live? <laughs> well. Well, surprise, surprise. Tobacco? Sir? No, thank you. 
There's a letter in it, I'm guessing. This is Scott. Take the tobacco. Flint came to see me today. I know he and Hornigon spoke. Uh, Were you there when... Eleanor, I would ask you not to put me in this position. I swore an oath. I have an obligation to Captain Hornigon's crew. When I saw Flint, something was different about him. You know what happened out there, don't you? What happened to Mr. Gates? I've never been under any illusions of what he's capable of, but this is just too... Eleanor, where are you? You're on a pirate island. You have put money behind him. You have put your credibility behind him, and now you would resist him? You need to ask yourself what you want, where your loyalties are, and whom do you trust? Is Vane walking on shore with the head in his hand? Well, that's a message. <laughs> wow. She gonna warn him? I didn't do it for you. Oh, um, no, really, seriously. Pumpkin, he didn't do it for you. I can't with her. I can't with her. I want a woman on this show to do so well. <laughs> Max is killing it. Max right now, killing it. Eleanor, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And with just this week's till, we can most likely acquire a paragua. It'll be a small start. We're going to sail again. I had a thought the other day. See if I can remember it. <laughs> she not want to go. What the fuck are you waiting for? Ah, no. She wants to celebrate. Anne's the captain now. <laughs> what is it? You're all so dead. There's something I need to show you. <laughs> this poor girl, whoever she is. She's just incapacitated all the time. What is wrong with her? That is the crown jewel taken from the Good Fortune Prize. Her father's Lord Peter Ash, governor of the Carolina colony. Low recorded in his log the ransom amount he intended to demand. They sedated her. As soon as she wakes, I'll get a particulars and go ransom her myself. <gasps> I told them then what you asked. They're not pleased. They're ready to go on the fort tonight. Why don't you go down this road? What if there's no turning back? Oh, you passed that. You just passed that. Oh, 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 the multiple crews are there. Okay, Flint, what speech are you going to come up with now? I know how you almost feel. Be embraced by Nassau again. But I'm here to tell you that place no longer exists. It has been taken from us by a madman. Held hostage. <laughs> now, I would like to say that the affairs of the beach should never take precedence over those of the purse. Even if we could ignore all of this and go on to win the Urka's gold, what then? 
What does she see? We return home only to have Vane extort from us the very prize that we have sacrificed so much to win. Charles Vane and the animals he commands have until sunrise tomorrow to vacate that fort. Or so help me, God! I will rain holy hell down upon him. Um, you're all within cannon range of each other? Eleanor, you knew this was coming. <laughs> so is the question, what didn't happen this episode? Billy, we didn't see Billy again this episode, but wow, I, 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 Ned Lowe's gone. Woo -hoo, I hated that character so much, so much. And he, <laughs> thank you show for not dragging out that. <sniffs> wow. Flint, Flint. Just so I am interested and I can't wait to see what turned that switch because I've obviously know we know he and 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 Thomas Hamilton they came to the Bahama area Nassau and something happened where he went from Navy for the crown guy to pirate and Mrs. Barlow somehow was in on that and, and went along with it, I'm guessing, how she got to be in her station that she's at now, but what flipped his switch and what made him go balls to the wall, single dogged, determined no matter what to achieve whatever it, the this perfect Shangri-La of Nassau that he's envisioning. I'm finding that interesting. Eleanor. So Jack and Anne are going to be pirate captain. Well, not pirate. They're already pirates, but their own ship. How does that feed in with the rest of the story? I'm interested to finding out. And I want... It's so funny because I always say I want somebody to root for. Because I do. When I'm watching a story, I want to root for somebody because I want my time to be spent where somebody I enjoy... And I can connect with on a moral sort of level gets their goals. Because it feels like I get my goals. So in this show where everyone is very much morally gray. Trying to find someone to pin that hope has been tricky. <laughs> so Charles, what I admire about Charles is that he doesn't stay down. He still finds ways to try to keep afloat he's dog paddling hard his softness towards eleanor i think also for me helps prevent him from being total ned low esque level of eh. so i don't so i want him to do well yet he's standing in the way of everybody else i kind of want to do well <laughs> they both can't do well so who do I want to take out whom? I don't know why I want Flint to get his gold so badly. Maybe because I too admire parts of Flint. His murder aside, no, not at all. But his cunning and just dedication. That should mean every, that should, that makes sense, right? <laughs> So the random thought I had a few days ago was the constant changing of the ships and everybody's ship getting blown out of the water, sunk, shipwrecked. And it made me start thinking, how many ships were in the area all along? Because that's where everybody traveled for a couple hundred years was by ship. They didn't all survive. So a, a small number are still around today. There must be shipwrecks everywhere. It seems to me that you can't go 10 feet without stepping over another shipwreck. Just a random thought. I <laughs> so episode four, I'm guessing we're going to get a cannon battle showdown between the fort and whatever this new ship is. We still don't have a name for it. 
But now we got Hornigold's Gold's crew. Who knows the ways underneath the way. We've got this poor girl who's been kidnapped and ransomed three times over now. I don't know, because why did the first ship have her already incapacitated? Or was she not incapacitated at the time? She was taken off of the Marigold Morningstar Hoochie Wachi boat. And we still got a crap ton of gold on an island just waiting to be picked up by somebody. And when's Billy going to come back? Oh, we know that's coming. We know that's coming. Whew, I'm tired, y'all. I don't know, but I'm... Whew, what an episode. <laughs> but there we go, episode three, but technically... 9, 10, 11, 11... <laughs> black sales thank you so much for being with me and if you haven't already i don't know why you haven't hit subscribe so you know when the next video drops in the queue and all the other things that i'm watching because i i'm gonna start watching new things soon and i want you to be there with me when i start those news adventures so until next time stay hydrated stay cool stretch your bodies seriously stretch your bodies and then come back and next watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all. And until next time.